guys. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some grounding techniques. So grounding techniques can be really helpful if you are someone like me who has things like panic attacks, flashbacks, and dissociation. So usually during those things, you lose sense of kind of where you are, your surroundings, and like the present moment. A lot of the times, panic attacks, flashbacks, dissociation are caused by things in the past or worrying about things in the future and you're not really thinking about the present at all. And when you get stuck in those thought patterns um, that are making you panic, you can actually make your panic attacks, dissociation, flashbacks last a little bit longer. So finding something that you can ground yourself with in the moment can be extremely helpful in reducing the intensity of those things and also um, reducing the length of time that those things happen. So in this video, I'm going to go over five grounding techniques that are some of my favorites that you can use to help you during things like panic attacks, flashbacks, and dissociation. So the first technique I'm going to talk about is the 54321 grounding technique. So in this technique, what you do is you look around the room and you find five things that you can see, four things that you can touch, three things that you can hear, two things that you can smell, and one thing that you can taste. So what this does is it has you really focus on your environment, which can help take the focus off of whatever is making you panic and on to where you are in the present. And usually if you do something like this towards the beginning of a panic attack, you can prevent it from getting too intense because you can redirect your attention onto what's around you in the present moment. The next technique I want to talk about, I don't know if it has a name or not, um, but basically what you do for this is you pick a color and then you look around the room and you count how many things that you see that are that color. This is something that can be repeated as well. I did this recently when I had a, ther uh, had a panic attack after therapy. I was still sitting in the office, so what I did was I picked a color, counted all the things that were that color, and then I moved on to another color, counted those things, and just kind of continued to do that until I felt myself calm down. So this is one that you can really easily just continue to do because there are a lot of colors. So you can keep doing this a lot of times in a row. And what this does is, again, it helps you focus on your environment and the present moment, which can help you to not be as panicked as we discussed during the last technique. And this also makes you count. And the reason that counting is good when you're having a panic attack is that most of the times when you're in um, a panic attack flashback or dissociation, your emotion mind has kind of completely taken over your logical mind and it can become really hard to engage that side of your brain that is responsible for logic and reasoning. And counting is a really good way to engage that part of your brain. So even if you're just counting simple things like the number of blue things that are around you, it engages that logical side of your brain and then can help pull you out of that panic state even faster. The next technique I'm going to talk about is called 448 breathing. Um, there's a couple different variations of this. I find that this is the one that works best for me, but you can adjust the times um, for whatever feels the most comfortable comfortable for you. So the first thing that you do is you breathe in for four seconds and then you hold your breath for four seconds and then you release and exhale. For eight seconds. So again, just like in the last grounding technique we talked about, this is having you count and engage your logical brain. And also a lot of the times during panic attacks and flashbacks and things like that, your breathing will become faster and shallower. And this will raise your blood pressure, raise your heart rate, and will kind of make those symptoms of a panic attack worse. So by focusing on your breathing and counting your breathing and really working on making it slow, the most important part is that your exhale is longer than your inhale. This will help lower your blood pressure and your heart rate and help your body calm back down. The fourth technique I want to talk about is using cold temperatures. This is something that I have talked about in a lot of my other videos because it is my absolute favorite grounding technique. It works for me. It works for everything panic attacks, flashbacks, dissociation, self-harm urges. It works for so many different things for me and I find it so helpful um, that I talk about it a lot. Um, so I'm gonna talk about it again here. And this is a really good one because you can use a lot of different things for it. I keep 
the instant ice packs that you squeeze to pop and then you shake them and then they get cold. I keep those in my car. So I have them with me all the time. Um, if you're home, you can grab an ice pack from your freezer. You can grab a bag of frozen vegetables. You can just get some ice cubes, fill a bowl with cold water, take a cold shower. Another thing that I do if I have maybe forgotten to take my ice packs is if it's cold outside, I will put my wrists against the window of my car. And that's another cold feeling right on the inside of my wrist. Or if it's not cold outside, I can blast my AC and hold my hands over the AC. And that kind of does the same thing. So using cold temperatures is one of the stronger techniques because it is going to give you a more um, fast and kind of a, a more effective response to pulling you out of panic. Um, this is because temperature and a big temperature change like that will help to shock your body out of the panic and back into the present because you have a very clear physical sensation to focus on. And it also works to lower your blood pressure and your heart rate, um, again, which all increase when you're having a panic attack. So the cold temperatures can help bring that back. And the last technique I'm going to talk about is muscle tensing and relaxation. This is, again, actually something that I used uh, this week in therapy when I was starting to have a panic attack. And what I do for, for this technique is I start at my toes and I focus all of my attention on my toes. Think about kind of squeezing my toes, curling my toes, feeling the muscles tense. Hold that tension for a few seconds and then release it. And then I continue to do this and work all the way up my body. So my feet, my ankles, my calves, my knees, thighs, stomach, chest, neck, shoulders, face, um, and arms, hands, things like that. So you kind of go through your entire body, tense one muscle group up really, really tight, and then release it. So a lot of the times when we're having panic attacks or flashbacks, our bodies will tense up without us realizing it. So you won't actually realize how much tension you're holding in your body until you do something like this where you're focusing all your attention on your muscles and working to tense them more and then relax them. So this helps your body physically to relax. And a lot of the times once your body is more physically relaxed, your muscles are loose and you're feeling a little bit more comfortable, that helps signal to your brain that, oh, there's not actually anything that we need to be panicking about right now and can help calm you down that way as well. Um, this technique works really great for me. I hope it works well for you guys as well. And it gives you, again, another physical sensation to ground you in the present moment. So that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this video was helpful and that maybe you found some techniques that you could try. Um, I always love to hear which grounding techniques work for other people. So if you have one of these that you really like, please feel free to leave that in the comments. And also, if you have one that I didn't talk about here, but you think is very useful, please also leave that in the comments because I'm always looking for more ideas on ways that I can help ground myself because I have panic attacks a decent amount of times. And I never think that you can have too many things to help reduce those. So please leave those in the comments. I love reading them. And thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.